Recently, star of Empire Jesse Smollett was exonerated for the charges of the falsification of a hate crime, despite widespread public opinion that he was guilty. Throughout all of this, Smollett's fans were adamant in his innocence, defending him even with all of the information stacked against him. Does being a fan cloud your ability to see through people's stardom and see into who they really are? I'm your host, Kate Orta, and I'm joined by my guests, Xavier Martinez, Monet Almarez, my captain, and August Macabo. This is Spotcast. So, do you guys consider yourself fans of something? Yes, I would consider myself a fan. I'm definitely a fan of dance and dance history. Being a fan of screenwriting and movies has given me the chance to make a lot of good friends. Yeah, I'm a fan of a lot of things, um, including animation I'm like a really big fan of. I'm a fan of visual arts. It helps me express myself. And would you guys consider that being that fan of something um, as part of your identity? It definitely shows a part of me and shows how I express myself and how I show my emotions to others. Um, I do consider being a fan of dance as part of my identity because it's definitely something I like to do and it gives me a way of expressing myself so I consider it my identity. Yeah, I feel like um, being a fan of the things I'm a fan of is really important uh, to my identity because it's it's what I enjoy and I feel like that's uh, a central part of just me as a person. And also the things that I've uh, enjoyed and been a fan of like have oftentimes helped me make friends and that's what I feel is really important uh, to just sort of my idea of myself as a person. Um, my art has definitely helped me like learn more about myself and like kind of figure things out and have you guys ever been in a situation where something you were a fan of um it's come out that there's that it's problematic in some way or that someone who's working on it has done something wrong once uh there was i was up one night and i saw an article about a screenwriter that i idolized to help me with my own writings and he was caught in this scandal and uh, i was just heartbroken upon finding it um, yeah, well, the company Nike uh, had some backlash a few, few, de- few decades ago, like the 19-somethings, I can't remember, but basically the workers for Nike, the company, they were being treated actually like slaves, and that kind of hurts because like, I like Nike, and I like what, they're, what they produce, their clothing and stuff like that, so for that to be a company that I like to associate myself with or wear, and, but I don't like being associated with that's how we should treat people. Yeah, I feel like I'm a fan of a lot of like movies and TV shows and such and like the people working on those, it happens a lot where something will come out about uh, someone working on that, that they've done something like bad. And it kind of really sucks whenever it happens because these people that like you'll think are really really cool for working on something that you really really enjoyed it turns out aren't the greatest people and you shouldn't be like idolizing them yeah it totally sucks because like in a lot of ways you've tied yourself to this thing that you're a fan of um and it can be really difficult when it turns out that that thing is you know not not what you thought it was like it it almost is this like sense of loss for this like awesome thing that you were interested in um it, it, in a lot of ways, it can also feel like the, when people come after that, then like you're being attacked, right? Have you guys ever experienced that? Uh, me, myself, I was sort of in that denial phase upon finding out that uh, the screenwriter was in this scandal that I fell into the trap of just immediately saying they're just accusations and I'm not going to anything, but I slowly just went into the into the phase of accepting that he probably did it and I gotta look at him a different way yeah that can be a really difficult a really difficult thing because we don't want it we don't want to think that way we don't want to face that that aspect of ourselves even is like wrong or different how about you August um I feel like whenever something comes out that someone uh that I've sort of really appreciated as a person and you know respected for what they do it comes out something bad I try to not uh defend them at first because it it almost in a sense defending them 
almost makes it seem like you're trying to defend the act the behavior they took which can be really really harmful and can almost normalize that behavior which is really bad i made the mistake of not questioning the accusations that my friends was like accused of and ended up defending him for a long time turns out um he actually did do something pretty bad and it made it backfired on me because I was here defending him not even questioning and it made me look like a part of what he did was something I was involved with yeah and that can be really difficult because like you said we've kind of tied ourselves to that situation or that thing that we really enjoy because we talk about it so much that it can really hurt to be associated with something that you thought was really good but turns out that it's got some seriously problematic things um, have you guys ever seen any of this beyond just things that we're fans of? Um, I definitely, being a fan of something and not wanting to leave the other side is can go broader than just being a fan of a person or something you like. It actually can go back into um, our politics and how our countries run with the two parties always arguing back and forth at each other about what we should do, what law should be passed. It's very black and white. No side wants to believe that the other is right and kind of negotiate something where both parties would be happy. They're both like, oh no, well my side's right. Uh, your side's definitely wrong, but not really look at the information. And that can also do go for movements too, that you have these big movements that are trying to prove the other side is wrong. But maybe in some cases, it um, could be a combination of both. Not one side is purely good or purely bad. Not one thing is black or white. Everything has a little bit of gray to it. Yeah, and that's something that like it's really difficult in some ways to admit because we always want to feel like we are totally right all the time. Because that's really easy. It's really easy to be like, yes, my side is right. The way I've been thinking, you know, for all my life in some cases, is right. Because it's really difficult to reflect on that 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 might be you know even even if it's not all wrong maybe you're not totally wrong that it does have that complexity like you said yeah exactly so that's all the time we have for today i'd like to thank my guests xavier martinez Mune almaraz my captain and august mcavoe i've been your host kate orta and this is spotcast <laughs>